this transformation that you see on the screen right now is known as a rotation. And in this video, we're going to apply rotations to existing graphs. But not just graphs, we're also going to look at two more unexpected applications of rotations. But first, we need to know what is a rotation. Let's rotate by an angle of theta radians, and the rotation matrix can be calculated via the results of the green and the red vectors. Let's zoom in on the green vector and observe that it makes an angle of theta radians with the horizontal x-axis. This green arrow has a length of 1, and using some trigonometry, the adjacent equals the cosine of theta, while the side opposite the angle theta is given by sine of theta. This tells us that the landing point of the green vector has x-coordinate cosine of theta and y-coordinate sine of theta. Let's likewise analyze the result of the rotation on the red vector. This vector makes an angle of theta with the positive y-axis this time around. It has length of 1 and therefore its y-coordinate is given by cosine of theta. On the other hand, by considering the side opposite to theta, its x-coordinate is the sine of theta. But more precisely, since this vector is pointing towards the left, the x-coordinate is given by the negative of sine of theta. This tells us the final position of the red vector after the rotation. The full rotation matrix is the combination of these results. For the first column, we can think of it as cooking up the first dish giving us cosine of theta and sine of theta respectively. The second column can be thought of as creating the second dish, whose result is the negative of sine theta, cosine of theta respectively. More details on this cooking analogy in the video card. This is the famous matrix representation of a rotation by theta radians in the anti-clockwise direction. And we can apply this in the context of graphing a hyperbola. A hyperbola has two separate branches, and its equation is the standard equation x squared minus y squared equals 2. If we rotated this by pi over 4 radians, we obtain a suspiciously familiar graph. Every point gets rotated by pi over 4 radians in the anti-clockwise direction. The reverse process is to undo this rotation. But this looks like rotating by pi over 4 radians in the clockwise direction. Equivalently, we are rotating by the angle negative of pi over 4 radians. But writing it as r sub negative pi over 4 is really an abbreviation for the rotation matrix. We can plug in the angle negative of pi over 4 and pre-multiply this matrix with the vector xy. To evaluate this matrix product, we can apply the recipe ingredient analogy. We're using x units of the green ingredient, which we can write as follows. We add this by y units of the red ingredient, which we can write out as follows. Since sine and cosine of negative pi over 4 have special values, we can plug those in followed by multiplying the multiples into each vector and then adding the vectors by adding their components. What we obtain here essentially is a substitution into the equation of the transformed graph. Details in the document in the description box below. And after performing very careful algebra, we will get the equation y equals to 1 over x which is precisely the graph that we obtain after we rotate the original hyperbola. But we can rotate a vector around a circle instead. Let's rotate it by an angle of theta radians, followed by another angle of theta radians. The combined effect is a rotation by an angle of 2 times theta radians. What we can now do is expand out the left-hand side 
as well as the right hand side. Here, due to space limitations, we are going to abbreviate the cosine of t via c of t and the sine of t via s of t. In evaluating the matrix product, we are using one unit of the first column and no units of the second column. The result, therefore, is just the first column. On the right hand side, we are applying a rotation by theta to a rotation by theta. We can expand out the rotation matrix and evaluate the matrix product. We are using one ingredient of the first column and no ingredients of the second column. This results in C theta sine theta. But now we can apply the rotation on this rotated vector. We are using C theta units of C theta S theta and S theta units of negative S theta C theta. Multiply C theta and S theta respectively and add the vectors by adding their components. In this equation, the left-hand vector equals the right-hand vector. But using this shorthand notation, we recover familiar expressions for the double-angle formula. In fact, could you use a similar approach to derive the triple-angle formulae? Let me know in the comment section below. We therefore applied rotations in the second context of trigonometry. But what is the third context, you might be asking? Let's return to the simplest green vector. We can treat this vector as a rotation by zero radians. We have not done any rotation at all. But we can rotate it by 90 degrees, or pi over 2 radians. Let's denote this rotation using the symbol i. What is i squared? Well, i refers to a rotation of pi over 2 radians, and i squared refers to this rotation applied two times. But the landing point of the red vector is simply negative of 1. This tells us that i squared equals negative of 1, which motivates us to write the symbol i equals the square root of negative 1. This is in fact a rigorous way to define the complex numbers. We can go one step further after some rotation by angle theta. The resultant vector has a length of 1. The length of the horizontal component is cosine of theta, and the length of the vertical component is the sine of theta. This tells us that we walked cosine theta units in the direction of 1, and sine theta units in the direction of i. But we could rotate a second time by the same amount, and this tells us that a rotation by 2 theta is the same as the rotation by theta applied two times. We could apply it for a third round, a fourth round, and a fifth round. And in general, we can apply this by n rounds. But a rotation by n theta means that we can substitute n theta into our formula. This is equal to the nth power of the vanilla rotation. In fact, we have just proven the Morbus theorem and applied rotations in the context of complex numbers, summarized in the videos here.